Hello beautiful people of the internet, how are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be another one of my what I watched recently videos. This is a recurring series on my channel where I just talk about the movies and TV shows that I have watched recently because I love an excuse to talk about what I have been watching on TV. I feel like this video today is going to be a bit of a downer because I don't have that many positive things to say about what I've watched recently. So I'm sorry for that, but I'm gonna try to end the video on a positive note at least. There will be timestamps in the description if you want to skip ahead to one particular thing, but let's just dive into what I've watched recently. First, I was peer pressured into watching the Barbie movie. I feel like everybody in the world has probably seen this, so I don't really need to tell you what it's about. It's basically a film based on the classic kids toy Barbie that's talking a lot about feminism and the pressures of being a woman in our modern society. I didn't particularly like this, but I also didn't dislike it either. Like I said, I was peer pressured into watching this movie by my mom. She really wanted to watch it when it came on Max, and so she asked me to watch it with her. And it's really just, this is not the kind of thing that interests me. When the Barbie movie came out and was very hype, I had no motivation to go see it. I just knew it wasn't going to be the kind of thing that I personally like and I only agreed to watch it because my mom wanted me to watch it with her. I mean it was a cute movie but the type of humor in this just felt a little silly to me. I don't think I was the target audience for this movie based on my own personal preferences and taste so I don't really have fond feelings for it, but I also don't think it's a bad movie. I just think it's not the type of thing that I like. Um, I do appreciate that it pissed conservatives off. And I have to say the part of the movie where they were talking about all the different Barbies in Barbie land and they talked about depressed Barbie who just stays in bed and watches Pride and Prejudice over and over. Um, relatable. <laughs> Cause I too love to watch Pride and Prejudice when I am sad. Um, though I personally love the 2005. Um, the 90s one is good too with Colin Firth, but I grew up on the 2005 version. So that is, that is my comfort film. <laughs> I relate to depressed Barbie in that aspect. Now, next up, if you regularly watch my channel, you may have been surprised to see this video because I just filmed a What I Watched Recently video that long, not that long ago. And so you might be thinking, Jackie, why are you filming this so soon after the last one? Well, the reason I really wanted to film this video was because I wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed season four of Miss Scarlet and the Duke. Now, <laughs> I'm actually not going to sit here today and tell you how much I enjoyed it because new information that has come to light has kind of like ruined the season for me because I thought that everything that happened in season four was leading up to potential growth and development in season five, but that's not the case apparently. So I'm very perplexed by the writing choices that were made with this season. I have talked about this TV show multiple times on this channel and every time I talk about it I say how much I love it and how I want you all to go watch it and sadly I don't know if this is a show that I can recommend to people anymore. The basic premise of the show is it's set in Victorian London in the 1880s and it follows Eliza Scarlet who is trying to make it on her own as a female private investigator. She is sometimes helped and sometimes hindered by her longtime best friend William Wellington who is an inspector at Scotland Yard nicknamed the Duke. And this show just has a wonderful slow burn romance between these two characters. The chemistry that Kate Phillips and Stuart Martin have on screen is off the charts. They just look at each other, brush hands, and I go feral. Which, in my opinion, is what a period drama is all about. I want my period drama ship to just have so much yearning, so much unspoken between them, and I want to lose my shit when 
they so much as touch hands. That to me is what a period drama ship is all about. When I watched season four, I loved it because I felt like we were finally getting somewhere with the main characters, will they or won't they relationship. And I finished watching season four fully hoping that season five was going to see the characters finally admit their love and embark on a romantic relationship. However, after season four finished airing, it was announced that while there will be a season five, Stuart Martin is not coming back to the show and it is going to be renamed just Miss Scarlet. The dupe is gone. And so now I don't have such positive feelings about season four because I don't understand why you would set the stuff up and then just not go anywhere with it. It feels like I as a viewer just had the rug pulled out from under me. I'm not going to go into specific spoilers here, but I do feel like I have to vaguely spoil the season in order to properly express my feelings about it. So be forewarned, though honestly, like I said, I loved this show. This was possibly my favorite TV show that was currently airing on TV. I loved the show. But I feel like I said I can't recommend it to people now because basically for four seasons the writers were teasing us and setting up something that's never gonna happen. And I just can't encourage people to go watch the show when I know the romantic relationship is never gonna have a satisfying payoff. Now, I've seen a lot of people on social media speculating that potentially Stuart Martin, the main actor, and the writers of the show may have parted due to creative differences. That is just a rumor and it's really not important to my point. Obviously, I don't know him. I don't know why he decided to leave the show. It could just be that he got a job that was gonna pay him better, you know? I don't know his life. I don't know him. But regardless of why he decided to leave the show, we know from the interview that came out when he announced his departure that he told the writers of the show before they even started filming season four that he was not coming back. So why didn't the writers actually give some finality to the William and Eliza relationship? He told them, I am not coming back for season five. And what did they do with that information? Nothing, <laughs> nothing. What the writers should have done was have a scene between the two characters where they acknowledge that they love each other, but they don't feel like they can make each other happy, have, you know, a finality, a goodbye. It would have been sad, I would have cried, but it would have made sense and given some sense of closure to the characters and their relationship. There was not a single part of me that thought after what I watched that William wasn't going to come back. I really just don't understand why they didn't actually give some closure to the characters' storylines because really it felt so open-ended. Eliza never acknowledged how she felt about him, if she loved him or not. We end the season with her making the conscious decision to keep up a correspondence with William while he is in New York. She tells Ivy that she wishes he had stayed, basically implying that on some level she does want to figure it out with him and pursue a romantic relationship. Ivy literally says to her, well, that tells you all that you need to know, basically saying to Eliza, like, there's your answer. You do love him back. Like, I just don't understand why it was written this way if he's not returning. They literally had an entire episode this season dedicated to the story of how the two of them met when they were younger. A flashback episode chronicling the story of how they met and became friends. The creator of the show, Rachel New, literally on Instagram advertised that flashback episode with the caption, their love story starts tonight. And the fact that she wrote that Instagram caption knowing that William was leaving the show, William and Eliza were never going to be together. Like, why would you write that on social media? I just feel like she's teased me for four years and I don't understand. 
And another thing that we learned from Stuart Martin's interview is that the only reason we got the limited amount of romantic resolution that we did get was because he himself pushed for it. Honestly, it seems like the writers had absolutely no intention of taking their will they or won't they anywhere. They were just going to drag this out to the bitter end with very minimal payoff for the viewers and the shippers. And I just don't understand why they made the writing choices that they did. I, I don't understand it at all. I was fully expecting to come on here and gush about how excited I was for season five and how I felt like we were finally getting somewhere with the main characters and their relationship, but it turns out we're not going anywhere. There's not going to be a satisfying ending to their story. I have no idea how they're going to write the character of William off. They said they're not going to kill him, so I guess Eliza is just going to say that they decided they're not right for each other and that's why he's not coming back. But if that's the case, that should have happened on screen. The writers have also said that they're going to introduce some new romantic interest for Eliza in season five. But the thing is, I enjoy Eliza as a character, but in these four seasons, she has had next to no character growth. Her circumstances have changed, but she as a person has not. And even if I wanted to see her develop a romantic relationship with someone else, which one, I don't because that was my OTP and I don't want to see her be in a relationship with someone else when William was like her soulmate and they had an amazing story. But even assuming I did want to see that, how am I as a viewer supposed to have any faith in her ability to navigate a romantic relationship when she couldn't tell William how she felt about him in literally 12 years? 12 years. How am I supposed to believe that she has the maturity and um, the emotional availability to be in a relationship with someone when she can't tell a man that she is in love with him in 12 years? I don't get it. <laughs> the writing for season four would have been great if it was actually building up to something, but turns out none of it meant anything and there will never be a satisfying conclusion to the story arc that we've had going for four years. At least if they parted on screen there would have been some element of closure, but the writers decided not to do that. I don't know why we got a flashback episode that basically confirmed to me that the two characters belong together if the writers knew they were never going to be together. I just don't understand any of their creative choices and I do not plan to watch season five because honestly I think it kind of got to a point where I like William as a character better than I like Eliza as a character. The other thing that I wanted to say is I feel like there were a lot of missed opportunities for his character. I feel like the creators of this show want Eliza to be the main character and so William as a character was often sidelined in favor of her and that's a shame because I feel like there were so many interesting storylines they could have given him. For instance, his past. Um, we find out that William grew up in a workhouse and we don't really know what happened to his parents. Based on a passing comment in season four, it sounds like his father abandoned them and his father is still alive out there somewhere in the world, but he has no idea where his father is. I think that would have been a really interesting storyline. Perhaps a case would have brought his father back into his life and then he would have to deal with those emotions surrounding his father's abandonment. I think it would have been really interesting to do an episode surrounding a death at a workhouse and we could have found out more about William's past that way. There were just a lot of missed opportunities for him as a character and it's a shame that they never went anywhere with those possibilities. To say something positive about Miss Girl and the Duke season four, the last season that I will probably ever watch of this show, which is a shame, I did really love the flashback episode. Honestly, after I finished watching it, I thought to myself that it was probably my favorite episode in the entire series. It was beautiful and shout out to the casting department because whoever found those actors that played young Eliza and William, <laughs> You are amazing at your job. These young actors playing the teenage versions of Eliza and William, they copied 
Kate Phillips and Stuart Martin's mannerisms so well. It was uncanny. Like I was watching them act and it was blowing my mind because I was thinking to myself, how is it possible that you are acting out the scene the exact same way I feel like the older actors would act out this scene. Sometimes the actor playing young William, like I would just like, how do you sound exactly like Stuart Martin right now and how he would deliver this line? So kudos to whoever casted that episode. You did an amazing job. I fully believed that these were just younger versions of the same people. They did an amazing job. So kudos to whoever casted this. Next, I watched the series Death and Other Details on Hulu. This show, man, this show had a really interesting premise, but I personally felt like it was not good. And honestly, the only reason I watched the entire season was because I had nothing better to do. And I just wanted to see how the mystery was going to be resolved. This show basically surrounds the investigation into a murder on a luxury yacht slash European cruise, our main character, Imogen. She is a family friend, I guess, of this very wealthy family whose name is escaping me at this moment. What was their name? Oh, the Colliers. Yes, the Colliers. So her mother, who died many years ago, worked for the Colliers. And after her mother's murder, Imogen has been sort of informally adopted by them. When a murder takes place on this ship, Rufus Coatsworth, who at one point was the most famous detective in the world, starts investigating the murder. Imogen holds a grudge against Rufus because many years ago he promised her that he would solve her mother's murder and then never did. But Rufus kind of brings her in as his assistant on this murder investigation. Rufus Coatsworth is sort of like this Poirot-esque figure in the modern day, which was super interesting to me. The reason that this show was such a fail for me personally is I didn't find any of it believable. Really, I didn't like any of the characters and I didn't care about most of them. I think I did care about Rufus and I thought Danny was a good character. Other than that, none of the other characters felt like real people to me. They all felt like caricatures and I really didn't care about them or their relationship, relationships. Um, Imogen's romances, both bland. Didn't care about either of them. I didn't care who she chose in the end. I really pondered why is it that I find all of these characters so unbelievable? And I came to the realization that the issues I have with Death and Other Details are very similar to the issues I had with Glass Onion, the second Knives Out film. I will link the What I Watched Recently video where I talked about Glass Onion in the card if you want to go watch that. And so the issue that I had with Glass Onion that I also had with Death and Other Details is that both of these forms of media are trying to satirize the rich. However, it isn't effective to me personally because they make the characters so over the top that they don't feel like real people. They feel like caricatures of the rich and not like an actual human being that you would actually encounter. It's very silly, it doesn't feel real, and the characters are not fully formed. So you can't really like them or hate them because they don't feel like a real person you would actually encounter in your real life. Death and Other Details was just so over the top and so unbelievable that I couldn't feel invested in anything that was happening because I didn't believe in what was happening. The characters should have had more emotionality, more strengths and flaws, and the attempts at humor just didn't work for me because kind of like I said with Barbie, I just don't really like that silly campy humor personally. So I wasn't invested in anything that was happening because there was no character for me to attach myself to. As for how the mystery in Death and Other Details was resolved, I kind of guessed where it was going, but I feel like there's some kind of like 
things that don't make sense about the ending where just logically I think in the real world it wouldn't play out the way that it did. I feel like the characters in the universe would have caught on sooner realistically and also having the idea of this all-knowing all-powerful crime leader is just kind of silly to me. Like it's kind of silly that there's someone who is that powerful that just like invoking their name will have their wrath upon you. Like it just is kind of silly to me personally. So this first season ended with a tease for a potential season two and I will not be watching if there is a season two. Granted the show had mixed reviews. A lot of people didn't like it and a lot of people really did like it. So maybe you'll enjoy it. It just was not the kind of thing that I personally liked. But if you do like that very satirical, very silly, very campy sort of thing, check it out. If you liked Glass Onion, you might like this. To end on a sort of positive note, I will say that I've also been binge watching Ripper Street. This is an older series from the 2010s. It's another historical crime drama, though it's not lighthearted romantic fun. It is definitely more dark, serious, depressing. This is a show that follows Inspector Edmund Reed and his colleagues at Scotland Yard's H Division in Whitechapel after the Jack the Ripper murders in 1888. So it is a crime drama that's definitely a little heavier and bleaker. If you like having a character to root for, I don't think you're gonna like this show because really there's not a single character who I would classify as morally good. Everybody is morally gray to actively like a horrible person, you know? But it is really entertaining, really well acted, and the mysteries are compelling. Edmund Reed, he definitely makes a lot of bad choices, but he's played by Matthew McFadden, so I can't totally hate him. I don't know Matthew McFadden, but I love him. As I said, Pride and Prejudice 2005, all-time favorite, so uh, I love Matthew McFadden, and he's Mr. Darcy in everything that he does. I, I just love him. I don't know him, but I love him. <laughs> so I've watched the first two seasons of this so far. There are five seasons in total, and I've really enjoyed them, particularly season one when we found out the backstories of Jackson and Susan, and that all came to a head. Oh my god what an amazing hour of television that was. It was so well written and I think one thing that the writers of this show are really good at is subtly incorporating the backstories of their characters. So definitely not a lighthearted fun romp for you to watch but really well done still. So that is it for what I have watched recently. Sorry if this was just too much of me complaining for you. I'm sorry. I thought this was going to be a happy positive video, but turns out it's not. I hope you enjoyed watching it anyway. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel so much. Please comment down below if you're still watching. Let me know, have you watched any of the things that I watched recently? And if you're not sure what to comment, um, I don't know what you should comment. Maybe like a sad face emoji because I was such a Debbie Downer in this video. <laughs> Please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more from me. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. My social media links are down below if you want to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or be my friend on Goodreads. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a stellar rest of your day. Bye, and I'll see you next time.